Hey everyone, Dan here from Handcrafted Miracles, and we'd like to introduce you to our latest effect called Kasna Klaha, which translated from Gaelic is Turn the Stones. The premise is that it's an ancient gambling game played with a little box and a stick that has three different colored stones, and they're supposed to follow the odd stone. Now, we are going to have three different versions. One of them is going to be a rustic version, one's going to be a deluxe, and one's going to be a collector's edition. They're priced differently based on finishes, but they all work exactly the same. Now, I've long believed that the best magic and movies draw people in. They have the special effect, which is the magic part, but they have a great storyline too. And Costa Claha gives you that rare opportunity to bring the audience in and you actually end up getting fooled at the same time they do, and it has a kicker ending that will leave them actually wondering if there really is such a thing as magic. So if you have the attention span and you have the time, at the end of this video, there's gonna be a full performance so that you can see exactly what you're getting uh, from a performance point of view. Nothing will be left out, and you'll be able to see the entire thing. So uh, I hope you enjoy it, and thank you very much for watching. see something really cool? Check this out. My name is Dan and this is Randy and we're here to demonstrate Kasna Klaha for you. Um, Randy, you ever played the three shell game or the three card Monty out in the street? Yep. So you know it's a con game. Right. Um, when I went to Ireland as a young man I met this slick street performer. His name was Seamus O'Shea. Now what made him so good is 86 years old. He had gnarled arthritic fingers. Didn't look like a slick hustler at all. Big, great big laugh. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. But he was playing this game with this little wooden box and it held a stick. If you look, there's two blue stones mm -hmm. and one red stone, right? You can mm -hmm. take a look at those. The way the game was played, people would come up, they would place a bet, and then he would have them put the red stone in whichever end of the, the box that they wanted. Okay. And then he would cover it up and then he would give the box a series of, of clockwise and counterclockwise turns as soon as you see their eyes wander, then you take their money, right? Mm -hmm. now, magicians love to take con men down a peg or two, especially young, arrogant ones like I was, you know? Mm -hmm. I, so I watched him make more money than I was making in my shows by a stretch, mm -hmm. you know, in any given hour. But I knew how to win the game. If you think about this, if you try and follow that end of the box, you're sooner or later going to get confused. All you got to do is count the number of turns. Think, think about it. If, if it's an even number of turns, it's going right back where it started. Right. It's an odd number of turns, it's going to be at the other end. Mm -hmm. So I came up and plopped down a $20 bet. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a one, but it makes it sound better. <laughs> put a $20 bet down, and I said, I'd like to play. He said, very good, sir. I put my stick in the box, redstone at that end. He covered it up. And as luck would have it, he gave it one, two, three, four, five, six turns. Too bad. Mm -hmm. you know, I could count, even number. Where would it be? Right that's exactly what I said. I knew that's where it was. He said, oh, no, I'm, I'm very sorry, sir, but the redstone is up at this end of the box. The only thing he did faster than spin in that box was take my money, I swear. <laughs> I said, son of a gun, how did he do that? It baffled me. But rather than do the smart thing and walk away, <laughs> I got sucked in, and I wanted to know how it worked. So I stood and watched for a while, and... I noticed he did something pretty slick, pretty tricky. Even with this gnarled arthritic finger, sometimes he'd give that box legitimate half turns. Mm -hmm. Other times, he'd give that box an extra spin while he was giving it those half turns. That blew the odds and evens right out. The problem was this and this looked so good, so close, I didn't know if I could catch him. Mm -hmm. Then I saw something that changed my whole day. I was mm -hmm. so happy. I don't, think any, I don't think he even saw it. Look at this carving right here. Mm -hmm. On this end, it goes over and under. It follows the Celtic descent. What oh, happens right. there? Yeah, they, go, they both go over. Yeah. There's a mistake. Yeah. There's a mistake in the box. I knew that. I saw it. I know nobody else saw it. I was giddy. I was so happy. I knew I could beat him at his own game. Mm -hmm. So I walked up and just like the arrogant young man that I was, said, I'd like to play again, 20 bucks. He goes, you're the magician fella, aren't you? Over at the pub. I saw you the other day performing pretty good. 
He said, all right, we'll play one more time. Against my better judgment, mind you. <laughs> and so I put my stone right there, and as luck would have it, Randy, he covered that red stone right with the mistake end of the box. I mean, it couldn't be any. I knew I had him. Mm -hmm. And he started, he gave that box a whole series of these fancy turns. I realized he could do it from the other way, too, yeah? Mm -hmm. He was just spinning away on that thing. I'm looking at him right in the eye. Smiling. Yeah. <laughs> it made him nervous, I could tell. Finally, he goes, all right. So, I give up. Where do you think your son is? All I had to do, just like you, where is it? It's easy. Right there. Right there. I said, my stone is right there. He goes, I'm going to give you a professional courtesy that I don't give to a lot of people. But, you know, magician to magician. I said, you're not a magician or a con, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, I'm going to let you choose that end of the box. No. 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 <laughs> I'm not falling for your tricks, you old charlatan. It's right there. He said, oh, I almost hate to take your money. But unfortunately, it's down at this end, and just like that, another 20 bucks into his pocket. <laughs> My jaw hit the table, I'm telling you. I said, all right, that's it. I can't beat you at this game. I quit. Now, and I started to walk away. He said, wait, 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 wait. I'm the last person that I know of that plays this game. It's been in my family for my whole life. You're a good magician. I'd like to pass it on to you. If you'll take me to the pub, buy me a Guinness, I'll teach you. Now, look, I'm out 40 bucks already. I'm thinking, that's a pretty good deal, right? If I can learn something that nobody, no other magician has seen before, that's really 40 bucks well spent. Okay. So off to the pub we go. I buy him a Guinness. I have one myself. We're talking, and he tells me this fabulous story. He's been an, a, an Irish tinker all of his life. That's a gypsy. They tour around Ireland. And he can, and all of his family, for back generations could trace his family all the way back to the ancient Druids. And he said that it was the Druids that created this to show people that they were magic, right? Mm. Fascinating story, you know? I don't know if he was telling the truth because he was a con man after all. <laughs> and this little bell starts going off in my head, right? Because he just ordered his fourth Guinness on my tab. Right. <laughs> Son of a gun. He's conning me again. Yeah. All right, Seamus, this is fascinating. But you promised to show me how this thing works. He said, I, and I'm a man of me work too. He said, you probably already noticed it's not a good idea to try and follow that stick around when I spin it because you're not going to be able to keep track of it for very long. I said, I got that, right? He said, all you have to do is count the odds and evens. If it's an even number of turns, it's down at that end. If it's an odd number, it comes back here. I said, yeah, I got that part too. He said, did you see my super secret move? <laughs> Been practicing that one my whole life. He says, Sometimes I give the stick or the box an extra half turn while I turn it. He said, that makes people believe that it's up here when in reality it's down here. I said, yeah, I saw that one too. He said, some people actually believe it changes in the box, one end to the other. I said, yeah. He goes, I think they think that because they see this little fake mistake carving that I put on. The son of a gun, he's been ahead of me the whole time. My arrogant magician But I'm going, oh my God. He said, yeah, I saw that too, Seamus. And he said, ah, so you want to know the real secret behind the stick? I said, yeah, that's why I spent 40 bucks and four pints of Guinness, because I kind of like to know. He said, all right. I told you that this goes all the way back to the ancient druids. I said, yep. He said, did you know that they were alchemists? They could actually transmutate metals and minerals so that they could change places. And they put their magic into these, at this point, I had a mouthful of Guinness and I snorted Guinness all over the table. I so, said, wait a minute, I'm into you for 40 bucks and four pints of Guinness, and now you're gonna tell me that it's real magic that makes this happen. He goes, I am, I can prove it to you too. He said, look, now I don't make these rules, but if you wanna see exactly how this works, it's druidic rules, you have to bet. Naturally. Yeah. <laughs> of course I do. So, but don't worry, don't worry. I don't want to take your money. Professional to professional. I, I, 
I'm going to, usually I have a two to one advantage. I have two blue stones, you have the red stone. I'm already ahead. He said, I'm going to give this deck exactly one half turn. And you can pick either red or blue and just tell me, what, just point. Just point to whatever position that stone's going to be after I turn this, that stick, you know. I said, I don't have to think about that. I'll take blue and in the middle. And he went, because blue never changed. It's always going to be in the middle. He said, what'd you have to say that for? And I said, because I want my 40 bucks back. He goes, no, I told you just point or it's going to be. Now that the stones have heard you, they're not. I said, all right. Enough with the real magic talk already and just turn the stick. And so with that, he did that and my jaw hit the table. Every Whoa. stone in the stick turned to gold. He said, look, it doesn't matter whether it's in the box or outside of the box. Once the stones hear you, they're not going to let you in. And with that, out it went my last 20 bucks into his pocket. Oh, he stood man. bolt upright and he left the room. I sat there stewing in my Guinness. <laughs> and about that time, the waitress comes over to collect the tab, right? Uh -huh. I go into my pocket to pay the tab. No idea how he did this, but what do you think I found in my pocket? The box, the stick, wrapped in a note saying, told you the truth. I'm the last in me line to be doing this. He said, all I want you to do is keep the magic alive. Now, Randy, I've been doing this thing for 20 years since then. I still have absolutely no idea how it works. 